Now, I'm going to talk about this method of Bible study and preaching I call God's Nature Bible study and preaching method. It, it will talk about help people to understand God's nature. Let me ask you these questions. When you know some of you know you, you know your friends. Some friends are very nice. Some friends are nice sometimes and then the other times they are not so nice. And some friends are super super nice. Which friends you like most? Super nice. The super super nice friend, right? Super <laughs> nice. When you know about this person' personality. <laughs> now let me ask you: Have you met many people who are super super nice? Now too many, right? <laughs> Most people have many flaws. But God is perfect in every way, isn't He? Yeah. We can see God's nature from His creation. How He created nature and our body. How he works in our heart to change our heart. How he can give us joy and peace and love. Now let me ask you this. If someone really loves you, do you feel love flowing into your heart and wow, satisfy my soul? Do you feel that way? From or you just say this person, or you just say this person loves me, so I feel good. What I'm asking you, do you feel love just flow inside you? Wow! I feel <laughs> Satisfy my soul. Ooh. Do you experience that from a person? No, no. From a person, can you experience? Love and joy. Can you experience joy from a person when a person shows up? Wow, I'm so happy. Oh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but what I want to say is, if you feel happy and loved, it's more like from your mind, you know this person is very good, right? Mm -hmm. And you like this person. So when the person shows up, you feel very happy. But do you really feel some joy? Woo! Enter! Woo! Do you feel some joy and love enter you? Do you? Not from human, right? But from God, can you experience that? Now, so then it's very special about God. He can put love and joy and peace in our hearts. He can take away your burdens. And He's patient to help us even when we are weak. And He has the wisdom to help you face any difficulty. If you really receive the wisdom of God, you would know how to discern a situation, how to discern a person, and how to make decisions. Also, when you go to heaven one day, you see fully how wonderful God is. You know, there was one person who went to heaven and he went into the river of life. He said that normally when you step in the water, 
The water doesn't enter you. But when he walked in the river of life, he felt love and joy enter his body through, you know, from the water. So when he stepped in the water, it's like this, wow! So happy and so full of love. <laughs> and there was one man who has a video online. His name is Ian McComic. I never in I never video complete an end. What your comic? He died and went to heaven. And he saw Jesus. And then from Jesus he can he could see a wave coming to him. He thought that wave was going to kick him out. But when the wave arrived at, arrived at him, <laughs> he felt an overwhelming love. Now when he was videotaped talking about what he what happened, it could be 20 years after the experience. Or more. But when he talked about it, he said, no one can be ready for God. When you see God, <laughs> Wow, the love is so overwhelming. Even when he mentioned it, he cried. At first, you know, before the incident, he was a playboy. God guided him to repent right before he died. So he could, you know, he, he first went to hell and then went to heaven. And then Jesus let him come back and he became a pastor. So he experienced this love of God. And when he described it, he said, no one can be ready to see God. He was greatly touched by the love of God. What I want to tell you is, the more we understand the nature of God, how he is, and how he treats us, how he loves us, You'll be saying, wow, it's so wonderful to have such a wonderful God. Oh, And I hope all of you will find out more about God. Now, God has given me this method of Bible study and preaching. In, in each Bible verse, I not only find out what the Bible verse says, I find out behind the Bible verse what nature does God have to have in order to be able to, you know, that promise can come true. What is the nature of God behind that? And when I understood the nature of God more, every day I really like God. In fact, and that's why you, when you hear me talk, I always talk about how good I always talk about how good God is. And I want to share this with you. Hope you will pay attention and remember it. And use it in all your Bible study. So that, you know, when you talk about God, people will be touched by the love of God and everything about God, including His holiness. Now, when, when some people talk about the holiness of God, they will say, you have to repent. You have to obey all the commandments. If, if not, God will punish you. So it's like, it's all heavy. 
Now when you go to heaven, it's not heavy. When you go to heaven and see all the saints there, they're all very joyful and full of love. And when you go to heaven, now, let me use an illustration. Are there some Christians on earth who don't like you? Are there some Christians who don't like you? Have you some Christians who don't like you very much? On earth, when they see you, sometimes they avoid you. Okay. But when one day you go to heaven, and then you see that person, and then you say, will he turn away from me now? But instead, <laughs> he will run to you. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> and you say, you don't mind all the things that are passed now? You change totally. <laughs> but in heaven, <laughs> he put down every negative feeling in the past. Mm -hmm. And he will hug you and, wow, really love you. And I want to say this. I want to say this. When you discover the holiness of God, it's beautiful. No more hatred. No more despise of people. No more negative thinking and feeling. It's all love and joy. You know, holiness doesn't mean like a church. Holiness is full of love and joy and always love people and love God. So when I talk about the holiness of God, for instance, when the Bible talk about do not be angry with people, you know, do not let the sun come down on your anger. I will first talk about the nature of God. Now, when people don't believe in Jesus, they live under the wrath of God. But if anyone repents of his sin, God is very, very happy. And God forgive us right away. And the whole heaven is happy. So in God, he has no anger toward his children. And so when we have the heart of God, he's always happy when he sees his children. Now, he's not happy with the sins we have. But when we repent of it, God is always happy. And God will always reward us for that. So, when you think of God when He looks at you, when you see Jesus, if you have a chance to see Jesus today, He will not say this to you. Look at all the sin you have. <laughs> <laughs> he will be full of love and joy. And that love and joy will motivate us to change. When I think of the love of God, I don't want any anger. I don't want to be angry with people. I want to be like God. Because in Him, it's all peace. It's all calmness. It's all love. So I'm just using an illustration. When I talk about holiness, I let people like the holiness of God. Okay, now I'm going to use some verse, uh, Bible verses to, to preach. Matthew 9.22 Now this verse, first, previous to this verse, it talks about Someone touched Jesus. And Jesus said, Who touched me? 
And the disciples said, Well, everyone is pushing against you. Why are you asking them to you? Jesus says, Someone. Yes, someone must have touched me because power has gone off from me. And, and then the woman knew that he has done something. I mean, she thought he's, she has done something wrong. Because according to the law, she was unclean. Being an unclean person, she cannot touch other people. So she dare not answer Jesus. But now she knew that Jesus knew that she touched him. She, she didn't touch the body of Jesus. She just touched part of the garments. Just so that he would know. But Jesus knew that. And then when she said, yes, it's me, she expects Jesus to say this to her. Shame on you. You are unclean. How dare you touch me and touch all these people? Now she thought Jesus would say that. But this is what Jesus said. Jesus turned and saw her. She said, take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you, and the woman was healed at that moment. Yes, sir. I took it on the child. I'm a gamba. The Damuamani, what I want. Oh, who kid is a quo, who Okay. Now, let me tell you uh, my way of preaching and also how. A, a very common outline you can use. You can write this down, this outline. Now, in all messages, I will always talk about the nature of God. And the, this, from this verse, the nature of God shown is His love for us is like a father toward the children and also how he accepts sinners and he cares about our feelings because he said take heart that means relax don't worry I care about you and your sickness is healed. Now, you can discover different natures of God, but you have to think about it. Okay? Now, I, first I want to talk about outline, and then I will present the message. Okay. In a message, very often I have an introduction. The, the introduction will raise the people's interest in this topic. So in order to raise the people's interest in this topic of how God accepts us like a you know, accepting us as children. That we can use illustration to make people, you know, think about this necessity of, you know, how important it is to have this family feeling. Okay, I'm just going to go through the outline first. And then after the introduction, the main points, first main point. Okay, you should write this down. First is, the problem of people when they don't have this God's nature. The problem of people. When they don't have this nature of God. When the, and then the second point, point is how beautiful God's nature is in this message. God's nature. So you can just say. And then when I talk about God's nature, I just don't name His love, His care. I just I don't just name it. 
Mwembanyo gena kumbala ya katonda si 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 atula watu zi si atula watu zi nti okwa gana I do this sir nenge nda ugenzi wentu I describe it so that people can feel it omutu nate gera nate gera chetu chenkola chiche njo gera po so that people will like it omutu nase wolo kucha gana ok and then number three it's also why can people live out this nature of God? Why can't? Why can they cannot? So what is hindering the people? Number four. How we can live out God's nature? And then number five. How we can have this nature of God? How? Is how. Oh, I'm sorry. Four is how. Five is challenge the people to have it. Okay. Okay, now I name it. No, I name, name this points again. Now I'm not saying every sermon is like that. But this is a good outline that you can use it will meet the needs of the people and, and let them know how beautiful God is and tell them how to change and challenge them to change. Okay, so I'll say this again. The introduction to raise the interest and the first point, when people don't have this God's nature, how they suffer, how the condition is. So these are like negative examples of people. Negative examples. Number two, God's nature. Shown in this passage. And how, and how beautiful it is. And then number three. What hinders people from living out this nature of God? And then number four. How we can live out this God's nature or enjoy it. So there are two parts. How to enjoy it and how to live out this God's nature. And number five, challenge to the people. Okay, now I'm going to use this like, you know, like a message, but I'll explain what I'm doing. Okay, the introduction. That we can, it's up to you what examples you want to use. I want to use some examples of some children. Who might be orphans. Or the parents don't know how to love them. Now recently in Hong Kong that something like that happened. There was a father who threw his baby and beat his baby every day. And then one day the baby was taken to the hospital and then the baby died. And over the body of this baby and also her brother, it's you know it's all kind of uh, wounds on the baby. And we can, we can imagine how this baby and the brother felt every day. They will be in fear. They, they don't know what love is. You know, people who don't have parents' love, it's hard for them to understand what love is. They always feel they are unloved by people and they feel they are un inferior to other people. So parents' love is very important to us. Okay, that's introduction. And then the first point, point yes, okay. related to God. Now, when we believe in Jesus, we know God loves us. 
Now, if we should all understand God really loves us, now is it true for all Christians? Actually, it's not true. There are many Christians who think of God as a church. When they think of God, they say, I did not pray enough. I did not read the Bible enough. I have many sins. God doesn't like me. Many Christians think like that. And then when they, you know, they pray to God, they always say, God, where are you? I'm in big trouble. Are you going to help me? So they are afraid God will not help them. But yeah, you have to watch this because you don't know where to start. Still have some. Okay, okay, you let me know. Okay. So when people have that fear, they you know, when they think of God, they don't think of God's love. They think of their failure. When they're in trouble, they don't think of seeking God. They will seek the friends. They might seek, you know, worldly pleasure. Or they might go to sleep. But, but if people are in the love of God, like myself, when I'm in trouble, I hold up to God all the time. God helps me us to have the electricity again. Oh my God, you can do it. Now, if it doesn't come back, I won't say God doesn't love me. It's, it's part of the problem of the world. If God performs a miracle, I say, thank God for that. Hallelujah. 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 Now, but for many Christians, God is so far away. Now, do Christians like this have strength? Mm. Now, let me ask you. <coughs> ask yourself. When you think of God, do you think of Him ministering to you now? Loving you now. Caring for you now. He wants to bless you and raise you up. Now some of you might think that way. But some of you might say, Pastor, yeah. It's too hard for me to have that relationship with God. No matter how you describe God's love, that's too far away for me. Now some of you may feel that way. And I want to say, God cares about you. God wants to help you with the message today. Now note, have you noticed how I speak? Now, I, I, I'm interrupting now. That, have you noticed my change of voice and my tone and my loudness and the speed? Now, I know some people preach like this all day long. God loves you. Everyone love God. Repent of your sins. Follow God. Now, well, some people need that voice to wake them up. <laughs> but if they are used to that kind of voice, they just close the eyes. And <laughs> now, when we speak loudly all the time, like if one of your family members always yell at you, 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 you can turn off what he said. So it's good to have different, you know, as loudness of the sound. And different voice quality. Now notice the voice I'm having now. God knows your needs now. 
God knows how difficult it is now for you. I know some of you might say, Pastor, yep, it's easy for you. But not for me. Now notice now, now I have loudness. And then, when there are some important words, I will let people hear these important words. I will say it like this. God cares about you now. God knows how you are now. And in God's heart, He's thinking of you. He cares about you. Okay. So I hope and you know that you notice this from me. And also you notice know my expression. It's relaxed. But I also show different emotions. Some people, they're afraid of God. <laughs> so we can show different expressions. And also the body motion. No it's not just the hand. It starts from the feet. All the way up the spine. Hallelujah. 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 I do this how I do it. Hallelujah. From the feet. Ooh. Now they can be gentle and strong. Oh, hallelujah. Now we all start from the feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, so I love you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and put it strong feelings. Not The strong feeling is not a show. It's from the bottom of our heart. Let me tell you this. My secret. I really like God very much. <laughs> now let me tell you, I like my wife very much. <laughs> I like my wife very much. We talk on the phone a few times a day even when I'm here. Whenever I can, I will send her messages. But let me tell you, I love God much more. Amen. I really like God. I like my wife very much. She's very wise, very gentle, very loving. But God has more wisdom. <laughs> My wife is a gift from God. Especially designed by God. For you. So I, what I'm saying is, when I see it all, it's all from my heart. Now, I want to say, if you really appreciate God like that, your whole life will be different. Okay, now, we come to, you know, last point just now I talked about, first I talked about how even some Christians don't understand or don't accept God's love. And they have a distance from God. And they have negative thinkings about God. You know, some Christians say like this. Look, look, at, me. look at me. Look at me. They say God is like this. He'll give you some trouble. And then he'll help you. So you say God is good. But God gave me some trouble. Have you heard people like that? Why did God let me come to this world? They give me all this trouble. 
Many people have this negative thinking about God. Now, I have I've told some people, thank God. Can you thank God? They said, I cannot think of anything to thank God. <laughs> because, because for them it's so hard to see the love and the grace of God. They were just looking at the suffering. And I told them the suffering came from Adam's sin and all our sins and then all mankind suffer. It doesn't, it doesn't come from God. And I said, look at the food. Do you appreciate the food you have? Do you appreciate your body? And you have a home to live in. Do you appreciate that? All this came from God. So we can start counting God's blessing. But many Christians say, Still, I cannot love God. Now I want to say this. If you are like that, it does take time for you to be healed. Because you've been hurt by people. Now today's this message might help you. Now when we look at this passage, now first we can describe this message first before I come to the nature of God. Now this woman, because she has, she has used up all her money. And she must feel very desperate. She find no way out. And she knew that she was unclean according to the law. She's not supposed to get in touch with people. But now she heard of Jesus. And she knew that this is her only chance. So she saw Jesus coming. She prepared herself. I have to go in there secretly. Because, you know, Jesus would say, I'm unclean. So I have to go in secretly. I cannot publicly ask Jesus. I just want to touch Jesus' clothing so that he won't know. What is in the heart of this woman? She felt unclean. She was unhappy about herself. She has worried. And she felt inferior. Let me ask you, do you sometimes feel inferior? You might say, I wish I were someone else. You might say, I wish I were Pastor Yip. Pastor Yip is so happy and free. But I'm not like him. Now some of us might feel very inferior. inferior. <laughs> but I want to tell you, God really wants to raise you up. Now this woman, before his con her contact with Jesus and after was totally different. Before her contact with Jesus, she was in fear. She felt inferior. She worries about her health. She had no hope. But she just hoped that she could get healing from Jesus. What she thought of it, just healing. So she went up secretly. On the way, she touched many people because the people were crowding around Jesus. And finally, she got to Jesus. She said, this is my chance, my hope. So she just touched Jesus' clothing lightly. Now, the Bible did not describe that. But Jesus' word said it. She said, I felt power come out from me. So this woman must have felt power enter her. And I believe that it's not just power. She would have felt love and joy and freedom. 
And suddenly she felt so much love flowing to her. And she felt very free and joyful and peaceful. And she said, Wow, Jesus is very different. And then she was thinking of sneaking out. But then Jesus said, Who touched me? Yes, now we can put the Who touched me? And I put up. She knew it's me. Gama ye ye. But she dare not say it. And I touch your gala. Because she was afraid of being exposed. But she Jesus said, Someone must have touched me because I felt power leave my body. Now, let me tell you that the Bible has recorded instances that people touched Jesus and felt power. So, when we touch Jesus, Jesus we can experience power. And that's why today we can lay hand on people when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. People can feel the presence of God. 